Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mad Palace podcast. My name is Aidan Ng, author of the Chronicles of Terra web serial novels, and the host of today's episode. For those joining us, the Mad Palace is a podcast by a group of writers of varying backgrounds, publication histories, experiences, and genres. We're here to talk about stories, writing, and maybe do some book reviews on the side. Uh, for today, let's see who we have as our guest. Um, I'm Jennifer Flack, and I don't know what I'm really known for, but the first serial was um, The Black Pearl, and most of what I've published online has been from that. So, that is me. And I am Ryan Watts. I also publish a web serial entitled Flocked, a action-adventure fairy tale series. My name is uh, Kathy Joy. Um... The first serial I published was The Brotherhood, uh, but I'm also known for The Gatekeeper, which is a fantasy adventure. So today's topic is about becoming a writer, or more specifically, at what point do we call ourselves and consider other authors as writers, and not just some monkeys banging on keyboards to make squiggly lines appear? Um, from my extensive notes that I took to be prepared for this podcast, stop laughing at me. Um, I had written casually for years and years and years without finishing anything. And, um, uh, I mean, the Black Pearl started when I was in high school and sort of just kept growing and growing, which is why it's this behemoth thing um but i'd say the first time i really felt like a writer um a combination of when i finished it and when someone i didn't know read what i wrote i'd say that's the first time i really felt like i had i was a writer versus i maybe that i was an author versus being someone who had ideas in her head that she put on paper <laughs> that that's sort of my writer moment i guess for me i don't really know when i started considering other people writers um have you heard of the philosophy of the pile of sand where if you keep taking a grain of sand from a pile of sand at what point does it stop being a pile of sand and just become grains of sand yeah uh, yes that's deep <laughs> that's what we do we're writers <laughs> ryan what about you well for me it's it's fluid you know there's been different times in my life where i felt like a writer and then it might go away uh when i was in grade school <laughs> a short story i wrote for a class was so well received they actually took my photo and made a little fake dust jacket for me for a little short story. You know, and I felt really accomplished back then at, at eight years old for, for being a published author within my, my, my grade school. And then that, you know, that, that went away. I mean, I, I've always been writing, but I never didn't feel like an author again for, you know, really until I was an adult again. Um, you know, and after many years of, after college of doing some writing, Really, once I started publishing online um, the web serial, and and getting feedback and getting people to read it who I didn't know, like like like, like we talked about, um, that was a tremendous help getting me feel to feel once again like I was a writer. But probably the single biggest moment where I realized that I actually might actually be a writer was in college when a terrible short piece that I read, wrote that a literary journal that I was on the committee for chose to publish because it was the right length to fit into a small gap we had in a, a page that was empty, um, was then parodied by somebody else in a different oh. paper. Um, so when I realized that my words had the power to inspire others to parody it, that sort of made me realize, okay, maybe I, I've got something here. That's that's one of the three things that I wrote down. Um, the two that I mentioned, and then the first time that I was full on attacked. Um, it's weird because that sort of has a certain legitimacy to it. When somebody, when you 
anger someone so much that they just have to tell you how bad you are. Um, yes. There's something to that that really makes you feel like I have inspired someone to care about what I wrote. What was your favorite angry criticism you, you've gotten? Um, there's one person that I'm not going to be too specific about because I'm just not going to give them the time of day. Um, but just, um, oh, I, I don't have any, I don't have anything specific written down. Um, that one person was just vicious though. And it was one of the first people that I came into contact with. So that was, um, that was interesting to have one of the first people that you really encounter just be so combative. And then there, there have been others that are just very critical about their own pet peeves. Um, just things like I have a lot of magic in my world and so there have been people that really get into well this just doesn't work like you need <laughs> you really need to rethink your your structure here and how things are working All right or when they have character problems that's always fun like the character shouldn't be behaving this way well, she is. Get over it. <laughs> yes, but have you ever had your work uh, accused of plagiarizing Barbie? Because <laughs> I nope. have. Because yes. I have. Awesome. You're, not, <laughs> you're never going to let that go, are you? Of course not. It's a badge Nor of honor. should you frame it's it. You should put that honor. into something. Work it into a story. <laughs> oh, I, I have it framed in a in a sampler over my mental place right now. You should place of honor. Caddy, what about you? Any thoughts on when you start acknowledging yourself as or becoming a writer? Um I don't know that there was a specific date because you know, it's just always been, you know, since before I could remember, as cheesy and cliche as that is. But I also think that there are times when I feel more like a writer and less like it, you know, if when I'm sitting down and working on something and it, it's doing what I want it to do and I think, yeah, I'm a writer and yeah, I can do this. And then, you know, there are times I look at something and I think, you know, how could I write this terrible thing? So I think it's a, it's a, I think what I struggle with is if you say you're a writer, like maybe you're going out on a ledge to say you're a good writer or a great writer uh, but I think that really comes down to the difference between a writer and an author I think I've always been a writer you know whether whether that's good or bad or not actually uh, I think the definition of being of between a writer and an author has changed quite a bit over the year hasn't it mm mm-hmm. It seems that everyone left and right it's, is calling themselves either a writer or an author, uh, even if they might not have uh, the experience or are producing any work of quality. Yeah, because they say like everyone's got at least one story in them, but that doesn't always mean that they can write it. So, and I think we're, we're all like all human beings are good at telling stories, but I don't know whether that's enough to be a writer. Yeah, we can also look at some of the more recent books that have been published. Some of these books have not really been on par. Um, almost some really f- a few of them borderline terrible. Uh, not gonna name any names. <clears throat> Twilight. <laughs> I didn't quite hear that. <laughs> um... <clears throat> I always get so frustrated because I think that so much of being, you know, one of the struck by lightning, you're actually making a living off of writing authors, you know, one of the (laughs) needle in a haystack people. Um, I feel like it's all such a marketing machine. Like people read what they, uh, what's, what's popular. I mean, they, they read what other people are reading. 
which I guess is what popular is, but it's more what I mean. Um, and so, I don't know, if any one of us had a marketing machine behind us, I feel like we'd be there. Um, stumbling into that marketing machine, though, is not easy. No. Mm. Yeah, I think it comes to the question if we uh, of um, if we consider ourselves writers if we're published or when we have a certain level of skill in our work. I think being a writer is a way of life. You just are, uh, you know, neurotic, unusual. <laughs> you know, it's you can be a writer and you don't have to write every day. You know, but you can. I think it's more of a, a state of mind. Yeah, and being published is so fluid nowadays. Um, even mm. for public published authors, uh, if they're not current, I mean, I've heard that there are plenty of authors who have had one thing published that can't even get an agent to represent something new, um, which is so depressing that they don't even have this leg up in the system. Um, man. Yeah, that's one of the experiences I don't really get here in Singapore. We we don't have a lot of we don't have publishing agents here, but we do have publishing services where you be where where you can pay people to publish our books or teach us how to publish our books, which is ludicrous actually. Um, we have a few publishers here, but the circle is also quite small, and they mostly do stories and books about the local cultures instead of anything abroad. Um, so, uh, Ryan, um, at what point do you think an author becomes a writer or a writer becomes an author? Is there a line between the two? Uh, I think I mean, from my experience, you know, I spent a lot of years writing very little, but I would talk to people at, at parties or events or, or wherever, and I would call myself a writer and they would say, well, what have you written or what are you working on right now? And I would fumble and stumble because I didn't have an answer because I wasn't actively writing recently. But in my head, I still thought of myself as a writer. Um, and so I think in many ways, once you start to really dedicate that time and that focus on the act of writing and, and trying to release and moving towards whether it's self-publication or trying to get an agent or a publisher um, to publish your work, I think that's what, what sort of turns you into an author once you've taken that active step. But, you know, you can always be a writer if, if, if the stories are in you and in your mind and in your head and, and you know, stewing around in there. You can still be a writer in, in that sense. Uh, it's that active step of pursuing the, the, the career that sort of changes your status. You know, I think that there is... I think a big difference because I've noticed that in uh, all of us have um, have written serials and I noticed that there are a lot of people that are unprepared to share what they wrote. Um, uh, oh goodness, what do I mean? Um, that they, even if they put it up online, they're unwilling to tell anyone that it's there and they they act sort of nervous <laughs> when anybody else reads it and so I, I think that there's something about um, something about this expectation that what you wrote is going to be read it's not like you're writing in a diary or a journal for yourself like that's that's creative and it's fun but maybe something that you're writing for your just yourself it doesn't make you feel like a writer because you write write for readers instead of just writing for yourself yeah which yeah. i mean i absolutely believe you write for yourself though because none of i mean we all know that there are things that we write that i mean we don't have hundreds of people that are just snapping it up the instant that we write it like it's gold so we do write for ourselves but there's this expectation that it's we're sharing it. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that because um, it took me a long time before I started sharing my work, and I started, and and it took me even longer to start writing regularly. 
you know, I think I was kind of nervous back then and I was nervous to show people what I wrote because I'm afraid these stories of mine won't be as great as I thought they are or were. About 10 years ago, I remember one time I had written a couple of short stories. I had this, this, this fit of creativity and during lunch hours was madly writing short stories. And a good friend of mine was in Italy for a year and begged me to send him my stuff. And I was terrified of releasing my, my children off into the world for the first time and, and having them be on their own and, and have to face the world. Um, but I did. And, you know, he read one of them. In fact, I sent the stories to three different friends and they all chose randomly the same story to read and did not read the second one at all, interestingly. Um, but the friend in Italy actually printed it out and then lost his copy of it. So once I realized that my story was out there in Italy somewhere where anyone could pick it up and read it, I sort of realized, okay, it's not so terrifying to know that your writing's out there. It's going to have to be out there at some point. I have to just accept that and and move on. And that really helped me to shake free of some of that that fear once I had no control over it anymore. Uh, and there still is some of that fear whenever I release something brand new. You know, who's going to read it? You know, when I release a new chapter of Flocked Online, you know, for the first two years, it was always this anxious panic over, you know, who will read it first? How long will it take for someone to find it and read it? You know, will it be liked? Will it be, you know, like a good, good feedback on it? Um, and so it gets easier the more you do it. It's an interesting sort of offshoot idea that... Um... I don't know, something along with being a writer where despite your best efforts and some of us probably want to control what readers are thinking more than others, um, you really can't control how a reader is going to respond to what you wrote. Like you think you put emotional cues or you've built up something, you have an intention um, and that you just you never know what's gonna get picked up on and that's fun and frustrating yeah it sounds almost like we're parents yeah yeah exactly <clears throat> so i guess becoming a writer is a i guess we can agree it's a multiple step process and nobody just becomes one right i think it's like constantly ongoing i don't think it's like a five-step process it's just infinite you keep on going and you get better you get to one stage you might you know get published and be an author and then there's another stage above that you know i've been lately when people have asked me what i'm up to my go-to response is usually that i'm pretending to be a writer so that <laughs> whatever that means that's my state of being right now pretending to be a writer so uh kathy it's like a way of life you said right yeah so basically i'm i'm guessing it's a bit like exercise to you yeah i've kind of always thought of it as something that's you know always been a part of me like i don't know having blue eyes or you know it's something you're always gonna have and you can work on it and but it's you can't necessarily change being a writer you know you can't change your eye color but you know there, there are stages to it it often feels like someone's moving the goalposts you know mm -hmm. you, you know oh, yeah. oh i have an idea for a story i'm not a writer yet okay i've written that story but i'm not a writer yet okay, my first novel has sold, sold millions of copies, but it's only one book. I'm not a writer yet. It's, there's, there's that constant, I could always go one step farther and maybe yeah. that's when I'll start feeling like I'm, a, I'm an actual real writer. Um, and I wonder in some ways if that's not because as a cult, as, as we see in American culture, writing is not necessarily viewed as a true career in some ways. It can be but, but writing fiction, writing books, it's something you, you, unless you are a multi-million dollar bestseller success, you're not really a real career yet. Yeah, uh, it's viewed so, as a career in the same way that like being a football player is viewed as a career. Yeah, it's only like a if hobby. you're getting 
millions of dollars to do it. Is it a career? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. you sort of tell people you're a writer and they go, oh, okay, so what's your real job? Um, right. It's exactly. being a writer, yeah. yeah. It's like, that's your hobby and you like doing it, but that's not your mm -hmm. job, right? <laughs> And, and so on that note, like I've I've made a conscious effort in the last few years to, you know, when I'm at a party now and someone asks me, what do I do? I say, well, I'm a writer. And by day I work in an office, you know, where I, I intentionally make my mind say, no, writing is the real career. Everything else is in support of that career. I like that. That's cool. Maybe it'll work someday. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but maybe. You can always dream. Yes. Yeah, that it feels like there's this cycle of writing of being in this perpetual state of disarray and uh, being ill prepared for what comes next. Because there was this long period of time where I could not finish anything even remotely novel length. Uh, um, I could finish short stories, but um, uh, when I finished my first novel, um, at first I thought this is it. I'm I'm a I'm a writer. I'm 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 good. Um, but immediately after that, I thought uh, I could probably do better with my next one. Uh, so I guess in, in the end, there's no real end to being a writer. You just keep going. At some point, you die, and people stop going through your notebooks looking for new stuff they can publish posthumously. So maybe at that point, you're done being a writer. That got really, really dark, really, really fast. <laughs> But I guess, like, you know, Sherlock Holmes keeps getting reimagined. So maybe in a sense, he's he's still Doyle. He's still writing. He's still, and that doesn't Whoa. even count, like, the fan, fan fiction and, and things like that. That's that so don't true. even see yeah. the light of day. Like, you've got some published. I think I'm reading one currently that's, like, Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell. It's by a horror writer. I haven't read it yet. I'm, I'm planning to. I don't remember what the author is called but yeah saw that on the bookshelf and i was like yep that's mine <laughs> so i guess you're right being a writer never ends <laughs> all right um well i guess that's all the time we have for today we hope you enjoyed this episode of the map palace podcast again for our guest today we have jennifer fleff um author of the black pearl and other novels you can find me on twitter at Jen with two N's snork, like the adorable cartoon sea creature. And on Facebook, um, at the Black Pearl series. Ryan Watt? Yep, author of Flocked, an adventure web serial. You can find me on Twitter at Guild of Feathers. And Kathy Joy? Hi. I am the author of The Brotherhood and also The Gatekeeper. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. The handle is uh, Kathy underscore H underscore Joy. And you can find me, Aiden Ng, author of The Chronicles of Terra on Twitter under the handle of at Aiden Ng. That's A-D-E-N underscore N-G. Thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Bye. 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 Some thought snake mice? mice. Did you just say go, mice? Go bathe. I'm gonna go bathe and feed a snake in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, my mother is, but she takes the whole writing is autobiographical, like very literally. Yeah. So if I write something, she'd be like, "You wrote that about this character's mother. Is that what you think about me?" And I'd be like, "No, <laughs> this is just generic mother. This is not <laughs> <laughs> generic mother number one." <laughs> Yeah. Yes, the, the paranoid mother character had nothing to do with you at all, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, Ryan's gone. He's gone. <laughs> that works. Okay. There's <laughs> enough There's enough garbage in my house. They will just trip and die. That is my security system. I'm feeling really judged right now. <laughs> so, in the middle of the night, you just hear them screaming. Just go, ah!